Okay, hello crafty friends. Welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, thank you for checking it out. This is Hanging On By A Thread, a podcast about fiber related things that I do, mostly knitting. And my name is Celia and uh, well, yeah, it's my channel, obviously. I'm the talking head on your screen right now. And um, yeah, if I, I feel like I shouldn't be saying that you can find me on Instagram and such because I hardly ever post. But if you do want to follow me on Instagram, <laughs> my handle there is at Silmoa. And uh, all the, my podcasts are divided up in chapters, so you can skip ahead to what uh, piqued your interest about this episode, or you want to stay along, okay. stay for the ride of rambling thought and. Um, Sit, knit, have a coffee with me, and you're very welcome to do that. Uh, yeah, description box, all those normal things that podcasts have. I don't have a lot of admin because I'm not running any knit longs, I'm not doing anything, I'm just showing up and talking to the camera. No, not the camera, I'm talking to you. And I'm very happy to have you. I'm still shocked that people actually tune in to um, to watch me. And so, things being as they are, the world being what it is, I thought it was time to just sit and talk about knitting for a while because... <sighs> yeah. Um... It, it feels weird to just be moving along, but we do what we can to cope with anxiety and worries. So, and for a lot of us, that is picking up the needles and doing a bit of knitting. It's been a month now since my last episode. I was trying to do a bi-weekly thing, so every two weeks to put up an episode. And that was working quite well. And then, of course, I don't think anybody in the world now doesn't know what happened two weeks ago. And I got a bit sidetracked and worried. Um, but back at it now. And the little bit of knitting that I did manage to do, I will be talking about it now. Okay, Celia. <sighs> For the returning viewer, you might see already that I am wearing a finished object. I finished my waistcoat. So it's not perfect. I messed up some things on the way up. I'm overall pleased with the result. And I have a thing I can wear. But if I were to knit it again, which I might do, a different color combo, I will change some things because my logic when I got to about here and needed to do the neck line <laughs> it just it didn't it, it it and I didn't do what I was planning to do. So I did some shaping, some weird shaping in the neckline here, so I ended up with a a, a kind of a um, mini shawl collar. And yeah, so in the end, it turned into a very 70s-inspired uh, waistcoat. I will cut in a tiny section here now on how it looks, so I don't have to stand up and move around right now. So as you can see, it is a v-neck, buttons, and it... yeah, I am pretty pleased with how it turned out. It's a uh, dusty job. I haven't... I haven't done the. I haven't added the vertical stripes in the contrasting yarn. Not sure if I will. Most likely won't get done now that I already fastened buttons and cut off unwoven most of the loose ends. And I know you're interested, so I'm gonna just 
take it off and hold it up not completely finished but as you can see there's like a tiny shawl color happening and I just let the armholes kind of be like that they, they kind of rolled in a little bit so they look nice they don't look unfinished I think they just look like the end there and the um, the whole super soft was held double with the uh, Roma lambs wool and it has washed out beautifully I washed this I gave it three rinses <laughs> I soaked it properly because there was so much spinning oil I the um, the dark uh, brown, the tobacco colorway, is was on a cone, so it is had a lot of spin oil. It was very hard, so it took a lot of soaking to get it out. But you see, it looks pretty cool. And I think the vertical effect, vertical stripe effect from the just that broken seed stitch, is enough for now. And on the inside, it looks like this. I guess you could use it inside out, but meh. And I did just a three needle bind off for the shoulder. So I did some short row shaping up top here that was really unnecessary. I would not do that again. I'd just do the basic decrease straight on the shoulders. Why Why do I complicate things? But that's what I did. <laughs> now I have a waistcoat. Knitted waistcoat. And I, I just prefer being able to open it so the vests are great, but I just kind of want a shrug type of thing that I can wrap over my back where it's, it tends to get cold, especially in the office. So that's it. Um, yeah, I made this in uh, Holst and, and Roma Lamps wool. The stripe is some hand dyed yarn from uh, Verbit, uh, Oslo, it's there. she's based in Oslo, uh, it's an online store, you can order online and get it shipped anywhere in the world, I would think. And yeah, that's it for my finished object, there is no designer to refer to for a pattern or anything because I made it up as I went along. Um, Oh, great start, Celia. I feel really rusty. It's been it's been too long since I did this. And I feel like I kind of lost my mojo between last time and now. I have finished another thing though. Don't I don't think I shared it, but I finished this. Has not been washed. Has not had its threads fastened, but we have a finished little sweater for the one-year-old, one and a half, I should say. And I'll wash this and he can use it in kindergarten um, now, because before spring comes, it'll be nice and toasty warm. This is uh, oh, out of practice, eh? very much deep breath this is the Vesle Winterfjell pattern by Skander Knits it is an excellent uh, pattern for a classic colorwork yoke traditional Norwegian knitting uh, style and 
I think for me, the only thing is that my row gauge is quite tall. So I think the resulting yoke is a bit deep, actually. Um, so I should either fix my pro or try to tighten my row gauge somehow, practice that, or maybe omit one of these repeats. But I, he's gonna grow and his body is gonna lengthen, and it'll be a perfect fit in no time, I'm sure. Uh, all knit in finul, Rema finul that I had in my stash. And well, it's the old PT2 uh, yarn, actually, this main color. Uh, yep, yeah. I plugged the designer, I plugged the yarn. This can go to the side. So, I, <laughs> as I've said, I've kind of been. I've been itching to cast on new things while at the same time kind of losing my mojo. So I was like, I want to cast on this new thing, but it's too much of an effort to do so. So I've joined... No, getting ahead of myself. I did cast on... Since, since the last time I talked, I did cast on one new thing. And that is the Tulip Cardigan by Melody Hoffman. So I have hopped on to the, the Unspun Yarn Yarn bandwagon and got myself some Pleto Lupi. And I have gotten this lovely space color for this the tulip cardigan by melody hoffman and we're blowing out color but that's fine because now you can see all of the color in that very dark black nearly black yarn i'm holding it double and adding a thread of silk mohair from roma which is this beautiful petrol color which is color number 6564. Pretty sure it's just called Petrol. Pretty, pretty. And the Plotolopi is colorway 2024. So holding those two together, you come with this fabric. So, there we go. Hairy and colorful and dark. So I am nearly done with my yoke increases. And I'm about to separate So I did knit on this for like four or five days and then it just got dropped. I think I got my fill of stockinette on this and I need to pick it back up when I when I when I get to a certain point of completion on the current whip, which is the daydreamer. Um, yeah, so I have a few things to say about this pattern. I I chose it because I wanted to try to knit with Plotolopi. I've never knitted one of Melody Hoffman's patterns before and I just wanted a simple crop cardigan that I could easily just throw on and, and use for anything. So I wanted something, a basic color dark one. I mean that goes with mostly everything and 
And yeah, so, so I got the two and it had a little bit of interest with that scalloped edge that looked, uh, looked very nice, cute, feminine. And so I cast that on, it's knit in the round, and I have a few issues with this pattern. There's nothing like wrong with it, but it's just not how I would prefer to knit this type of garment, I think. So, okay. Not to insult any Melody Hoffman fans out there, but this was first designed as a pullover. I'm pretty sure that it was a pullover. And then the second iteration of the pattern was for a cardigan. And it's a steaked cardigan at that, which is fine. I don't mind steaking at all. And this will just, this will just cut it and just tear at it and nothing will happen. I mean, it's plötalopi. So that's fine. But as I cast on, and then the first thing she has to do after the um, neckline is uh, short rows to make it slightly raised. And I think it's, it, it gives a very nice, well-fitting neckline. The... <sighs> but it is a cardigan. So I don't understand the logic between, for not adjusting the pattern to starting and ending in the front. So the way that the <laughs> um, short rows are done it is beginning of round is here on the back shoulder, which for a pullover makes sense because then any jogs or, or things will be happening on a very not so visible place. But this is a cardigan and a steep cardigan. Move beginning of round to the front, that only makes sense. So that then any short rows you're working, they're easier to do as well. Yeah, and um, just, just talking to the cardigan, might as well be net flats in my opinion. And I, I think that would for me make it easier to keep track on where my raglan increases should go because then I could just mentalize Raglan increases only on the on the right side of the fabric and then just, just pearl back and that's fine. <laughs> but now I have to keep track on where I did put my increases. But as long as I'm ending up with the right amount of stitches and uh, something that fits, I am happy. I do think it's going to be a very uh, uh, well-fitting and easy to wear cardigan. So, yeah, it, it, it seems like it's going to be a very nice uh, shape. The neck shaping, I'm already really loving how I've, I've, I've taken it on bigger needles and, and tried it on. I really like how it sits on my shoulders. So I'm looking forward to this. And I might try some more Melody Hoffman patterns. In the future, there are some very pretty... Plotelopi pullovers out there. There are some <sighs> podcasters <laughs> influencing me heavily um, on this. I mean, we'll see. Summer is coming, so that might not happen until we're creeping towards autumn again. But that is one new whip. That made into the pile of never-ending, always growing whips. Um, yeah. But my main project on my needles these past two weeks, at least, have been my Daydreamer by Andrea Maury. Again, it's one of those big name designers that I've never made anything from before and this is I'm really I'm really enjoying this knit now I might I got the the texture and the pattern is down in my fingers I don't have to think about it and of course it's coming to an end 
I am now knitting. I've got four more rolls to do on the back. The front has been completed and the neck band is done. So it's a v-neck and then after I've done the last couple of rows on the back now I need to refer to the instructions again and there is a saddle shoulder insert to be knitted which is going to be this pattern repeat that's going to go all the way down the arm. So I think this is going to be really really nice and once I wash this it's going to stretch out and, and open up a bit of the oh yeah this is going to be so good I am um, so this is my current motivation like I feel really motivated to knit on this and it's got the bubbles and the texture I'm just yeah I'm just loving this uh, I am knitting this in whoop, in uh, Roma. No, it's not Roma. This is another Norwegian manufacturer. It is Hillesvog Bilja, which is Hillesvog's uh, fingering weight lamb's wool. So it's very similar. I mean, you could easily uh, substitute one for the other makes no difference at all. Um, both made from lamb's wool from Norwegian white sheep and this in particular has been hand dyed by Verbit. I've got one cake left and one's cake 100 grams left and this so I've got a hundred and woof. Okay now this is just getting silly. So that's on the floor excuse me. So I've got this much left and that should be plenty to finish uh, two sleeves because I had three to begin with and I've got a whole skein left and with almost two skeins of or 200 grams of lamb's wool I've finished the entire body basically so and it's it's uh, like cable and honeycomb stitch which uses more um, more which tends to use more metreage than than like a lace so yeah it's gonna be good I'm holding it together with silk alpaca silk by Roma and this kind of beige color. don't remember what the color is. The number is 1315. Um, the Verbit color is a repeatable colorway so if you're interested it is called Hav Salt which is basically sea salt or ocean salt um, in Norwegian. So it's got a bit of it's got a beachy vibe to it it's got speckles of brown, oranges and blues on kind of a neutral, onto the neutral natural white uh, of the base, I think. So it's kind of just a speckle, hey, speckle here. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really enjoying this knit and it is slow, it, it's slowly bringing back my mojo for knitting. Um, I think I will try to complete this before casting on other things. Hopefully. <laughs> Just because I really I, I'm enjoying knitting this texture. It's very soothing. And just enough complexity for for my mind to keep focus. And yeah. That's The Daydreamer by Andrea Maui. I thoroughly recommend it. I think it's gonna be a beautiful garment and uh, it's a new to me construction, the whole saddle shoulder and the v-neck, so it's a lot of fun to explore that. Um, yeah. And 
I've got one more thing that I haven't shown before because it was a test knit. This is my unfinished test knit for Susan Crawford. It is a design that was published in Lane Magazine. So, and this is where my five millimeter short tips are. <laughs> I have made it as far I've done one sleeve and this sleeve has been done to specs it's way too short for me so I am definitely gonna be uh, unpicking the edge here and knitting this cinched bit at least twice as long I am knitting it in Holst so I got two cones and it is, you know how much <laughs> metrage is on these, but I'm holding uh, both colors double, so I am winding off a bit and I'm holding double, right? So this these colors are just beautiful. Um, this uh, brown is called Bracken. And this uh, this green is Heath. So Bracken and Heath, they are the kind of oily colors, very my jam. And the washed fabric looks like this. And it's super light and nice. So it's kind of a classic hound tooth pattern and it's a big cardigan. It's a big cozy cardigan, which is so close to being finished. I've got, I basically finished the body and onto the second sleeve. I've still got the lining of the pockets to knit and then a big shawl collar and a belt which i think the belt is a bit optional <laughs> not sure if i'm going to do that but it's definitely i did make it long enough that it is gonna be covering my butt which is important for this sort of big cardigan so I think that's going to be very nice and I'm actually motivated to make this happen for summer because I'm thinking it is going to be very cozy to snuggle up in this in the evenings um, when the weather is nice out onto the balcony after the kids are in bed and just look out over the fjord snuggle in this with a pint of homebrew and just yeah relax and enjoy living somewhere where we can do that so that's gonna happen yeah but I do know what my next color work cast on is gonna be because right now well the hound tooth is two colors so you could technically call that color work but I'm not gonna. I'm talking the next feral project that I'm gonna cast on is, of course, this. And the knit along has already started. The Facebook group is a buzz with like, you know, there's only 500 of these kits being sold. And uh, you get access to videos from Mary Wallen for each step of the project and I haven't started I mean I <laughs> said something about how how gone my mojo was that I could not be arsed excuse my language to find a 
25 needle tip to swatch and see if my gauge was right. That's 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 where I was at. Couldn't couldn't be bothered finding the needle. <laughs> so hopefully now the sun is out. <laughs> Things are kind of normalizing, we're getting used to shit again. Sorry, stop with the foul language, Celia. And yeah, when my patience ran out, my language worsens. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, this is... You get this nice little folder. And then an introduction, and there's the, the booklet. Doesn't. Yes, it has the charger. But it also has these beautiful big photos of the finished garment. So, yeah. I am going to be casting on. The Killing Cardigan pretty soon. Um, I, need to, I want to do it properly, so I'm gonna do all the right steps. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the instructions of Marie Wallen on this. And see, it even comes with the buttons, so I don't have to worry about sourcing the right sort of button. And that's really good, they're very pretty. And the tote bag is a thick one. It's a it's a much nicer quality than the one that came with the other kit that I got. Um, I like this narrow shape. Actually, it's a very nice quality bag. And down into the box in our compostable bag is, of course, a big pile of the British breed. And that is like, you, that's one of the main colors for like the, the edges. And I just like that green is, or blue, whatever, you want to call it it's just gorgeous I'm in love with that color I also really love this pink and the purple all the pinks it is such a gorgeous yarn oh wow that that smells sheepy that's insanely sheepy Mm, yeah, it does. It smells like hay. Mm. Oh, Harlem straw. It smells like straw. And sheep and farm. Basically, it does smell like a barn. Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah, I can see why some people might be like thinking it doesn't smell nice because if you don't have any <laughs> childhood memories of sheep farms and triggering all sorts of memories about grandma and running over fields, like that's what's happening to me. So for me, it's a good association and I'm like, oh, yes, summer's up at the farm into where the sheeps are in the spring, helping with the lambing, pulling little sheeps out of grown sheep bums, <laughs> that sort of thing. Weirdly, very nice, cozy memories for me. Um, you know, whenever my parents needed a break from us being shipped up in summer, to spend a couple of weeks there with grandma and grandpa. And they had sheep. And it smelled like that. So that's good. <sighs> Try I I will have this cast on my next time. 
if I have finished my daydreamer because I do want to finish that daydreamer. I really do. <laughs> and yeah, Feral Club 7 by Mary Wallen. It is not a pattern that is accessible to buy because it's a limited edition thing. But if you want to follow along and vicariously uh, knit, I will be sharing this project step by step. And, uh, and yeah, British Breed Yarns, totally recommend the colors so far, have not yet swatched with it. So that will be for next time. So um, that is on the very end. I have only one more thing that I want to share with you. And that is an acquisition. Well, the Marie Wallen thing was also an acquisition, but um, I had some yarn <laughs> arrive in the mail, which I had forgotten that I ordered. And why would I have forgotten? Because it was a pre-order. So I just jumped on and ordered a couple of colors from um, Lille Rille hand-dyed yarns. She's a Norwegian hand dyer. Um, this is her card and uh, Vilda, she makes the most amazing colorways and when she dyes up a batch and puts up for sale, they're just immediately snatched away and I've never been able to order because by the time I realize there's something published on her site, it's all gone. So seeing as it was a pre-order, I was like, finally, finally I get to uh, try uh, get my hand on some of her colorways. And she had this uh, colorways from Christmas, which was, I picked on her Highland Wool, which is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool, four ply, fingering weight. And this, I picked three of this of green which is called vintage wallpaper and I mean come on this is just gorgeous I'll take off the ball band and you can see this it's like a variegated tonal it's more of a tonal green with some speckles I'd say so ah it is very beautiful and I did get a contrast color which is the rusty rose which is like a peachy pink also very pretty so either they can be used together and I think that is very nice but I'm leaning towards this on its own and then picking a similar factory dyed green of a similar color but like a solid and then do a contrast a two color color work with this as a contrast I think that would be beautiful because I really love that green with that peach but I don't want the two hand dyed yarns to compete with each other. I want them to be able to shine on their own. I think they're very beautiful. So I might have to get some deep forest green to go with this peachy pink because I really like it but I don't think my complexion can pull off <laughs> A peachy pink stripe to my face. I I I look better in this sort of thing. I feel more comfortable in it anyways. Darker muted colors but I do love the bright and happy pinks and I'm so jealous of the people that can pull it off and, and wear it and not look sick. <laughs> So now that I live in a country with all blondes and they all look amazing in pastels, 
pastels and pinks and stuff like that, and blues. All the blue-eyed blondes around here. But I'm more of an autumn girl myself. And yeah, on that out. Oh, that's it for me today. I'm I'm not gonna have any ramblings in the end. And I just hope that you go go hug your yarn. I'm gonna take a moment here and knit a little bit more on my daydreamer. Maybe sniff some more on that <laughs> that British breeds yarn and hug some skeins and just try to let my pulse rest a bit and then and then i'll get to editing this hopefully it won't be a month until next time and chat again soon bye